This presentation is a summary of the 2015 Annual Report. Each of you should have a copy of the report in your folders and should reference it for greater detail. In 1963, the Ontario government commissioned a study to understand and respond to a threatened dairy industry's sustainability and positive growth. The result was the Milk Act, passed in 1965, which saw the establishment of the Ontario Milk Marketing Board, or OMMB. The new organization was charged with the responsibility of buying all of the milk produced in Ontario and selling it to processors. In line with the momentum of its early success in addressing grassroots issues, the OMMB expanded its portfolio to respond to an evolving set of local, national, and global market shifts over a 30-year period. Those years saw the end of the production of canned milk in 1977, the introduction of the quota exchange system in 1980, and the establishment of a single quality standard in 1980, among other natural changes and strategically planned advances. Then, on August 1, 1995, Dairy Farmers of Ontario, or DFO, was formed following the merger of OMMB and the Ontario Cream Producers Marketing Board, and continues to operate today under the revised Ontario legislation which unified the former milk and cream marketing plans under one organization. In November 2014, to recognize and celebrate its 50 years, the Royal Agriculture Winter Fair was the site of the 50th anniversary kickoff, followed by our annual general meeting in January 2015, hosted at the Royal York Hotel. This AGM had the largest number of delegates in recent memory and a very special live performance by Jim Cuddy and the reunion of the Ontario Dairy Princesses. A major highlight was in the summer of 2015, the 12 DFO regions across the province hosted an Open Farmers Day event as part of DFO's 50th anniversary celebrations. Nine of the Open Farms Day events occurred on June 27, 2015, to showcase the dairy industry and modern dairy farming for members of the community. All of the events were well received with an approximate total of 12,000 people in overall attendance. The 2015 fiscal year showed a decline in the number of Ontario licensed dairy farms to 3,780. However, these farms support about 9,600 farm families and have produced more milk than past years. Using the new entrant quota assistance program, 10 new entrants acquired quota on the exchange. As well, the new producer program had 83 applicants with 11 acquiring quota. With these producers, during the fiscal period ending October 31, 2015, DFO marketed more than 2.664 billion litres of milk, representing a total farm gate value of more than $2.075 billion. Food safety is essential to the dairy industry. Dairy Farmers of Ontario has the authority to administer and enforce the raw milk quality regulations. In support of this authority, DFO's Director of Production, George McNaughton, continued to carry out the duties of Director of Regulatory Compliance for the program. The role of the Director of Regulatory Compliance is independent of DFO's board. The standards are high and almost 99% of all milk shipped in Ontario met or exceeded the provincial quality standards. In November 2011, the general rollout of the Canadian Quality Milk Program, known as CQM, began as an important quality control program. Since October 31, 2015, a total of 3,773 producers, or 99.8% of Ontario producers, has been registered in the program. Registration was implemented over the four years since it rolled out. Penalties are assessed to producers who do not comply with CQM. The 2015 iodine load testing program started in April 2015. Testing starts with load samples, and is followed by testing of bulk tank samples associated with loads that exceed a threshold of 300 micrograms per liter. As of the end of October 2015, 506 loads were tested. The majority were in normal range, and only 2.2% in high range. P5 raw milk quality harmonization proceeded. The P5 boards agreed, in principle, to implement changes to the SCC and bacteria testing policies. While the regulatory limits remained essentially unchanged, the penalty calculation will be changed to a demerit-based system. Transportation For the year ending October 2015, there were 210 trucks picking up all milk and transporting to processors across Ontario. 
Transportation costs per hectoliter have decreased in the 12 months ending October 2015. The average year-over-year -year pool charge decreased from $2.93 to $2.83 per hectoliter. DFO is seeking rationalization of transportation regions to find further efficiencies. DFO's board approved a proposal for Eastern Ontario in which one transporter was acquired and volumes were distributed with an estimated annual savings at current shipment levels was approximately $500,000. DFO continues to work with the Ontario Milk Transportation Association to reach an understanding on process and compensation where DFO initiates a regional rationalization initiative. P5 Quota Committee over the winter and spring of 2015, the P5 consulted with dairy producers regarding the quota policy goals and objectives. On July 8, 2015, after considering the feedback, surveys, and reports, the P5 Quota Committee made quota policy recommendations, which the P5 provincial boards all agreed to implement. As a result, changes were made to non-saleable quota and the quota exchange price cap, ongoing farm sales, New Entrant Quota Assistance Program starting in 2016. Linked Dairy Facilities. The details of the policy changes were published in the Quota Policy Book. Highlights include the conversion of non-saleable quota to saleable quota and a reduction to the quota exchange price cap to $24,000 per kilogram of butterfat on or before August 1, 2017. In Ontario, New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island, the reduction of the quota price cap and conversion of non-saleable quota into saleable quota was effective with the operation and administration of the August 2015 quota exchange. In addition, effective August 1, 2015, all future quota increases are to be issued in the P5 provinces as saleable quota and on Ontario, effective July 10, 2015, a producer selling quota as part of an ongoing farm operation must sell 10% of the quota held at the time of application on the quota exchange. A Class 1 milk price decrease was implemented across the P5 on February 1, 2015. The national formula called for a February 2015 decrease of 0.454% in fluid milk prices over the February 1, 2014 level. The entire amount of the decrease was applied to the Class 1 butterfat component price charged to processors. An industrial price decrease of 1.8% was applied to the skim milk powder support price and implemented on March 1, 2015. The CDC based its pricing decisions on the COP formula while taking other economic conditions and factors into account. The Ontario average composition price paid to producers was $78.24 per hectoliter. There was a 4.7% decrease in the producer blend price compared to the previous calendar year. The decrease was a result of weak world prices and, to a lesser extent, the decrease in fluid and industrial prices in February. World prices are not expected to recover for at least the next 12 months, which will continue to put downward pressure on the producer blend price. DFO's Economics and Policy Division provides technical support and economic and statistical analysis to the policy development and implementation process at the national, pool, DFO board, and staff levels. The Economics and Policy Division is also responsible for the oversight of the Ontario Dairy Farm Accounting Project, which collects data from the Ontario Dairy Farms for the national COP. Addressing the economics and policy in the year ending October 31, 2015, for the 12 months ending October 31st on a butterfat basis, P5 fluid milk requirements decreased 1.3%. Industrial milk requirements increased by 2.2% and innovation requirements, DDPIP and DIP, decreased 6.6%. Including the introduction of a growth allowance in December 2013, this translated into a net increase of 1.8% in P5 market requirements. Over the same period, Total market requirements, including the growth allowance for quota in the WMP market, increased by 3.8%. Having regard to milk supplies and quota utilization, milk production was strong with the P5 filling 102.3% of the issued quota for the fiscal year. The pool filled 102.3% of their quota, which included the growth allowance during the year. The P5 pool provincial cumulative difference, or the provincial credit position, was 0.25% at the end of October 2015. The P5 pool steadily used up its credits in 2015.
Production was very strong as the pool tried to ensure all butterfat markets were filled and that butter stocks were rebuilt. Market trends pointed to continued growth prospects. The fluid market was fairly stable for the first half of 2015. The lower values of the Canadian dollar significantly reduced cross-border shopping, which helped to stabilize sales. Cream sales were also very strong, which played a role in the strong Canadian butterfat requirements. Cream sales were expected to remain positive, although not as strong as seen over the next 12 months. Butter sales were the major contributor to the growing Canadian requirements in the last year. As of the end of October 2015, the total industry butter stocks held by processors and the CDC was approximately 13.4 million tons. This level is below target levels. Rebuilding of butter stocks was slower than expected given the production levels. This was an indication of the very strong demand for butter fat. These levels were lower than the normal, however, capacity to dry excess skim is an issue to increasing production. Producer quotas were increased, and in Ontario, production is 4% higher than the previous year, month over month. The submission of the processor's proposal for a modernized Canadian dairy system on January 22, 2015, marked an important date to launch discussions for the national negotiations. National and provincial boards and staff intensified their work over the following months by providing a number of analyses and administrative procedures in support of the discussions between producers and processors at the national level negotiations. A facilitator was hired for the national level negotiations to support the work and to guide the discussions towards options that could bring a viable situation for all. Towards the end of DFO's fiscal year, the national-level negotiations intensified with more focused discussions on the core elements required to create an environment that could result in the modernization of the ingredient infrastructure in Canada. On October 13, 2015, DFO and two butter powder processors in Ontario announced the implementation of an ingredient strategy at the provincial level that will make skim solids competitive and encourage investment in modern ingredient infrastructure. The Ontario ingredient strategy was mainly done in recognition of the urgency to increase skim solids processing capacity as a catalyst for the national ingredient strategy. Parties to the Ontario agreement have always indicated their preference for a national agreement as the only way to deliver the full potential behind an ingredient strategy while being clear on their intent to move forward as soon as possible with the provincial agreement if a national deal is not obtained in the near future. Further work is still required and more than half a dozen meetings are scheduled to take place in the early months of the upcoming fiscal year. DFO's chair and general manager, as well as staff, are actively engaged and committed in the national process and are major contributors to ensure its success. There were several national and pool policy developments over the fiscal year. The P5 Harmonized Milk Allocation Policy for allocating milk supplies to support Class 2A yogurt and Class 3A cheeses has been in place for the past two dairy years. The policy has been a success in ensuring the additional milk is available to support growth in the prioritized Class 2A and 3A and in all the other growing milk classes. The implementation of an additional 1% growth allowance for a total of 2% by the CMSMC effective March 2015 and the general milk supply situation prevailing during the summer months in 2015 played an important role in the decision to stop the milk movement between the pools. Simplified Milk Movement The P5 Milk Movement Obligation Technical Working Group was formed in May 2015 with the mandate to understand the origin of the MMO calculations and propose improvements as needed. An integrated model is being developed and should result in a significant improvement with respect to how MMO elements are connected with the potential for further improving the response to satisfy market requirements. Organic Milk The P5 provincial boards have reaffirmed the commitment to create a P5 organic milk pool that will encompass both a harmonized producer payment policy and a harmonized billing process. The premium paid for the production and marketing of organic milk increased by $3 per hectoliter effective February 1, 2015. DFO also eliminated the administrative checkoff of $4 per hectoliter on Class 1 and Class 2 deliveries for organic producer recruitment and mentoring on June 1, 2015. This is expected to increase organic producer revenues. In addition to these milk pricing and checkoff decisions, 
DFO's board also decided to establish an organic producer blend price starting November 2015. This change is expected to increase the price paid to organic shippers. The board gave priority access to producers wanting to ship organic milk through NEQAP. DFO received applications for four new entrants who will begin shipping organic milk between fall 2015 and spring 2016. The board approved the creation of an organic producer advisory committee. With a mandate to provide input on organic milk demand and organic supply, identifying areas and opportunities for greater efficiency in the producing and delivery of organic milk, and providing feedback on programs to recruit, mentor, and make available opportunity for existing organic shippers to increase organic milk production to align with demand. Ethnic Marketing Initiatives The arrival of new immigrants from all ethnic groups to Ontario continued to drive the demand for more ethnically appropriate food products. This resulted in a stronger demand for new products. South Asian dairy products demand grew in 2015. Distributors were matched with suppliers from other provinces. As a result of this success, an opportunity was created to export some South Asian dairy products to Australia. The East European market was also a very successful program. As a result in the increased demand for South Asian and East European dairy products, Distributors sought processors in Western Canada to partner with and manufacture these ethnic products. Some processors are looking to expand production capacity in order to keep up with the demand and will be adding new equipment to match their specialty products needed in the market. Latin American cheeses made in Ontario were shipped to Quebec, Manitoba, Alberta, and British Columbia. DFO assisted in identifying new demand matching demand with product supply, and bringing the added technology needed to manufacture the ethnic products. DFO's strong and proactive approach to maximize the potential growth supported processors' special needs for milk supply and allocated the milk needed to produce the products. Marketing and Promotion DFO has been identifying its own promotion and marketing opportunities over the past year and was instrumental in the establishment of the new Recharge with Milk sponsorship for more than 10,000 minor hockey competitive hockey players in the Greater Toronto Area. DFO also announced its title sponsorship of the Ontario Men's Curling Championship to be televised on Rogers and Sportsnet. It is expected to attract over 18,000 spectators and more than 100,000 television viewers. In total, more milk was donated to Ontario food banks. The donations increased to more than 855,000 litres over the past year. Dairy Farmers of Ontario, Ontario Dairy Council and the Ontario Milk Transportation Association are proud supporters of the Ontario Association of Food Banks. Donations amount to over 2,500 litres of milk per day. Today, the milk program is the single largest ongoing food donation program across the province, serving over 375,000 individuals including over 130,000 children, each and every month. The milk is donated by dairy farmers, transported by the milk transporters, and processed and packaged by the dairy processors. The final product is delivered directly to food banks across the province. Thanks to everyone who participates in this program. Dairy Farmers of Ontario continues to place a high priority on producer communications. DFO's Communications Division is responsible for developing and implementing communication strategies with producers, processors, government, media, and the general public through the use of multiple communication channels, including a monthly magazine, regular bulletins and weekly publications, social media, and web services. The Communications Division is also responsible for the Dairy Education Program. The Milk Producer, Dairy Farmer Update, and Pipeline continue to be the cornerstones of the ongoing written communications efforts. To further improve communication with producers, in 2015 e-clippings, delivering mainstream news and industry developments, was increased to a weekly distribution. Use of web-based video conferencing is increasingly being used to reduce travel costs and improve communications opportunities. Media Several issues attracted special media attention in 2015. In particular, issues regarding the TPP announcement and excess skim milk in the summer months and DFO's ingredient strategy. Animal welfare continued to be a main priority for DFO, both internally with ProAction and in the media. 
Social media continued to be an increasingly popular way for people to find, consume, and share information. While having played a role in social media for a few years, in August 2014, DFO launched its own Twitter account, at Dairy Ontario, and Facebook page, Ontario Dairy. As social media is measured by the number of impressions created, DFO generated an average 20,000 impressions per week. DFO's website had continued to evolve to meet changing demands and opportunities. This past year saw DFO's website undergo a complete rebuild with a planned launch in early 2016, offering a new design to allow users quicker and easier access. The Milk Producer magazine was also redesigned in January 2015 to give it a more modern appeal, while its content focused on on-farm policy and management, markets, and economic development. Much of the hard work was recognized with three international Apex Awards. Knowledge Transfer Project, Canadian Dairy Wiki and Advanced Dairy Management Program. The project, which is designed to provide support for key stakeholders, including staff, board, and DPC members, with the development of information and materials that explain key introductory and advanced level information on the business of dairy in Ontario, across Canada, and internationally. The project also provides the general public access to a source of searchable information on the Canadian dairy industry and supply management. The two key elements of the project are Canadian Dairy Wiki and the Advanced Dairy Management Program, and is scheduled for internal launch in early 2016. The Dairy Education Program celebrated its 20th anniversary in July 2015. Over the 20 years, the DEP has conducted over 104,000 presentations to over 2.3 million students. DEP continued to grow and adapt to curriculum needs in the classroom with dairy educators present in each county and region. DEP improvements included new promotional materials and new education videos featuring the five topics of dairy education. Promotion of DEP continued to be a focus at DFO through the distribution of program packages to every school board in Ontario, campaigns which included Facebook and Twitter, and the delivery to every elementary school in Ontario of a 10x10 hardcover book that contained program and contact information and featured beautifully painted cattle. DFO's Corporate Services Division is responsible for budgeting, financial and accounting services, overseeing the corporate strategic planning process, human resources management, office and facilities management, project management, and information technology services. One major aspect of its responsibilities is the billing of processors and payment to producers and transporters. Pay what you bid funds. The balance in the PWYB fund at October 31, 2015, totaled $109,107 and has been transferred to retained earnings. All future outstanding commitments will be funded through regular operations. Human Resources DFO's succession strategy continued to focus on an integrated team approach and reduced individual dependencies. This continued to be partly achieved through knowledge transfer strategies and the development of educational tools, Canadian Dairy Wiki and Advanced Dairy Management Program. DFO continued to ensure business continuity through the development of succession candidates realignment of roles, and talent management strategies. Through realignment of positions, an additional resource was added to the milk allocation team, which is a critical area of the business, and IT desktop support was brought back in-house. The overseeing of projects through a project management office was consolidated with the planning responsibilities of the human resources and organizational development manager. Building facilities in order to maximize the value of the property at 6780 Campobello Road, DFO continued to rent out a section of the building to DFC and an engineering company. In addition, the 30-year-old roof was replaced as part of the ongoing DFO property maintenance plan. Information Technology Video Conferencing The video conferencing technology that was installed at DFO in 2014 underwent further enhancements with the installation of wireless capabilities and improved audiovisual capabilities. These additional enhancements will allow for improved efficiency and effectiveness through higher quality telecommunications for meetings held via conference calls and video conferencing. Application Framework Upgrade the development of the new milk marketing system was well underway with seven of the nine sprints completed or to be completed by mid-November 2015. 
Programming for Sprints 8 and 9 is expected to be completed by the end of March 2016. Testing of Sprints will then need to be completed. The Go Live date is targeted for the third quarter of calendar 2016. Board Elections Henry Oosterhoff was acclaimed to represent the producers in Region 3 for his second term on the board. Albert Flederis was elected to represent the producers in Region 7 for his first term on the board. Ralph Dietrich was acclaimed to represent the producers in Region 11 for his second term on the board. Immediately following the adjournment of DFO's annual general meeting on January 15, 2015, the four-year term of the newly elected board members commenced. Board Executive Committee After 16 years of service on the board, Bill Emmett, board member Region 7 and board chair, retired immediately following the adjournment of DFO's annual general meeting on January 15, 2015. At a special meeting of the board held on January 15, 2015, Ralph Dietrich was elected as chair, Paul Viss was elected vice chair, and Murray Shirk was elected second vice chair. Board Secretary Graham Lloyd was reappointed secretary to the board. Board Treasurer Patrick Hopping was reappointed treasurer to the board. The board extends its thanks and appreciation to the staff for their dedication and work during the year on behalf of dairy producers and in support of the dairy industry. In closing, the board would like to thank the DPCs for their valuable input in policy development and for their general support throughout the year. The board would also like to express its appreciation to all of DFO's partners in the dairy industry for their advice, support, and cooperation. This concludes our video presentation for the annual report for 2015. The report has been signed by Ralph Dietrich, Chair of the Board, and Graham Lloyd, Secretary to the Board. Please take the time to read the full annual report for an in-depth review of the organization's activities during the past year.